Welcome back to the channel guys, Track Call Quest. My name is Danny and we are back out here in my temporary garage. We got Dusty in the background. He's gonna have uh, some work done to him today. And we are continuing with the next phase, phase two. I'm getting Dusty ready for the upcoming trip in April, guys. Uh, we're gonna go check out Cruise Moab 2024. So um, we did a little overview in my previous video. If you wanna go check that out on line items, uh, you might wanna take a look at if you're attending the event because the inspectors will be looking for those things. Um, or check out Cruise Moab's website and they'll give you a list of requirements that they expect from you. Phase two, we're gonna be replacing the parking brake shoes on Dusty. I wore those out pretty bad in, in Arizona. And then we're gonna be performing the park and brake stall test. We're gonna to attend to that today and we'll see if we could actually get to the uh, park and brake momentary switch. And that little switch is what illuminates the little light on your dash. And uh, I think my switch is bad or it's out. I did replace all the bulbs in the instrument cluster. So I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. having a hard time pulling this off it's because you need to loosen up the the gear uh, the adjustment gear for your parking brake shoes and uh, and the way to access that gear is through this hole here in your drum oh, didn't have to do that slowly but surely spin the sucker one way or the other off the backing plate and uh, get it ready for reassembly. brand we're going to be going with these are premium brake shoes made by Wagner these are reasonably be priced bought these for about uh, maybe $28 is under $30 got a good deal on these and these are equivalent to Toyota brand same material same bracket you see this cutout half moon cutout goes toward the top and the square cutout goes towards the bottom it's that simple so 
let's go ahead and reinstall the brake shoe. We're going to end up reusing all the hardware because this hardware is fairly new, guys. Not only that, but this kit did not come with the springs and all the little bits and pieces. So we're going to just go ahead and use what we have. There are two types of pins. So these are the pins that slide from behind into the backing plate. So you're going to have a curved pin which sits in the front here and your straight pin sits in the rear and the way that's the reason that's designed that way is to clear this this horn uh, bracket there while it's in the vehicle like so so you got three raised sections here and these raised sections is where the steel frame of your shoe rests kind of just lives there and it moves around and that's in those three spots so we're going to apply a little bit of grease on those three contact points like so and then we're going to apply some on this step is we're going to install this lower rear spring so there are two uh, attachment points you can see the one in the front you don't want to use the one in the front you want to use the one in the rear and these are fairly easy to just hook just like that and just let it sit there because we're going to attach the other end to the opposing shoe My hands are cramping I had too much coffee like and uh, you got the tab washer goes in first then your uh, retainer spring and then your retainer washer all gets locked in there like that don't forget that lower spring down back back in here <laughs> on there with the screwdriver and that's what it's supposed to look like okay this one sits on this bracket that's attached to the backing plate and that goes in there like this you could easily just use a pair of pliers the lower adjustment spreader Uh, driver side now. Okay guys, we're looking for that switch. It's a momentary parking brake indicator switch. And uh, it's right here. Okay guys, we're going to test the circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and ground 
this onto the lever mechanism and then on this end we're gonna insert it into the the connector there and we got power so the circuits working correctly okay guys it might not even be the switch but I have a switch just in case so the circuit it's working because when I close the circuit it illuminates my tester here so does that mean I have a bad bulb shouldn't have a bad bulb because I replaced all the bulbs with LED bulbs a few years ago so and it really didn't want to remove the cluster a whole lot of work I'm gonna have to go get my screwdriver we're gonna have to pull this cluster out mm. Brake light's right below the zero to your speedometer. So it's gotta be this one right here. It's a brand new LED bulb. I'm gonna put the light on there, see if it lights up. On. It's on. It works. Check it out, guys. So we got the brake light back on. But now, we got to figure out what's going on with that power light. That's for your ECT transmission. So, maybe we got to swap out that bulb. I got extras. Alright guys, I got some good news. Dusty passed the freaking emissions test. Man, dude, these OBD1 trucks require so much more as far as the emission testing procedures. They, run, they gotta run all sorts of different tests. It takes about 30 minutes. The first initial test, he failed because he wasn't warmed up enough, you know. The computer, or the emissions testing computer, failed him automatically, so. They gave him a second chance. They had to warm up the engine and do the, whatever they had to do. And, uh, and then they had to freaking hook up all sorts of pipes. They had to freaking stick a probe in the prostate exam over here. <laughs> Anyways, passed. So now we're going to move on to the next test, which is the parking brake stall test. Engine in idle, so the vehicle's going to be coasting in third, pretty much. And, what you got to do is apply the parking brake and the parking brake is supposed to be able to stop and stall the vehicle eventually just got to find me an old road in the back country here and uh, which is not too far from my house we got a bunch of little roads back here and we're gonna go run that test and see see what happens <laughs>
Okay guys, we found a nice little spot here. There's a slope, a down slope right in front of me. We're gonna just coast Desty down. So we're gonna try to pick up speed and then we're gonna coast down at idle and then apply the parking brake and it should come to a stop. I've adjusted the parking brake, the shoes are good. So let's go ahead and uh, test it out. All right, guys. So, overdrive off. We're gonna back Dusty up a little bit. This road does come to a dead end. And put it in drive. All right, here we go. Beagle came to a stop and I'm in drive, so we're good. That's pretty much it for this video. I think I'm gonna turn in. It's been raining all day, on and off. It's so cold out here. I'm done. But I do want to just kind of brief you guys on what we did today. You know, we ended up fixing the brake light indicator light in the instrument cluster, and we figured out that uh, the momentary switch that's already in there works like it should. Uh, the wiring is all intact, no open circuits. Um, what it ended up being was that the bulb had to be rotated 180 degrees. So I removed the bulb, rotated it, and then put it back into the socket, and that seemed to cure the problem. So I'm really, really happy, because uh, that little set screw to get to the uh, momentary switch was very difficult to get to with the center console being in the way, so we scored. Check that one off the list. Uh, for these evaluated items down below, we're just gonna go ahead and start checking those off. Headlights work, running lights work, no excessive fluid leaks in the truck, exhaust system works like it should. The steering, you cannot have excessive play. We're good if we have a rebuilt uh, gearbox with a 105 sector shaft upgrade. Uh, windshield, it's good. Wiper function good. Horn. So the horn does not exist in this truck. I did buy a horn kit that we're going to be installing in the next video. Vehicle jack. So they re recommend a high lift jack. I do have one, but I usually normally carry a bottle jack. So I'm going to have to think about that one. Toe straps. We have toe straps and recovery points on the vehicle, guys. So uh, we're good. We're just gonna deal with the horn. Make sure that you know we got horn function in the vehicle. So we're gonna be installing a brand new horn. Um, we're also gonna be uh, finalizing the gold wing windows. So I ordered extra brackets, and uh, we're gonna be installing two gas struts per gold wing window. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this video and uh, we will catch you on the next one. I'm getting my butt inside. It's cold.